Okay, so today, uh, Niagara College Marketing 1301 Principles of Marketing, I said from the very first day, one of the insights I want to show not only students, but everybody is some financial literacy. I, I really wanted to invite someone on this program that can really give some solid proven advice, like right from the ground, right from the, tent, the trenches. And joining us today is David Somerville. And David and I, man, we've known each other for a number of years. I have so much respect for you and your team, your firm and what you've done. And David's with Capital Wealth, uh, Capital Wealth Management right out of St. Catharines. And uh, David, like it's awesome to see you. And one of the things I wanna say to you is, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule because I know how busy you are and how busy your team is to give back to Niagara College, number one, which was a conversation we had, but also a really good group of students. And David, like there's, there's no rules on being a student this year. It's, I've got students from all over the world and these are brilliant, brilliant young minds. They're great people. A lot of them want to start their own businesses. A lot of them want to start their careers. But one of the things I'm finding missing is being able to sit with someone like yourself and just getting that solid, not only financial, but investing advice uh, right from someone who knows more about it than anybody else. So David, you know, thanks so much for being with us. And, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about, you know, our relationship, how long we've known each other, but also a bit about your background and a bit about your business. Yeah, thanks, uh, Neil. It's great to uh, nice, nice to be on the show with uh, with you and all the uh, all the students. So, for those out there, I um, my quick background is I finished high school, seventeen years old. Um, you know, I love what I love. I don't love what I don't love. If I'm loving it, I'm into it. If I'm not into it, I'm not into it. And my parents said to me, "Are you going to go to college or university?" I had a chance to go to a university. I thought it's not really for me. I think I'm going to go to college. And they said, well, if you go to college, we'll get you a car. So that was an easy one. So go to college. So I, I picked Niagara. And just a bit of the background here is I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So I kind of had this thought, I'm going to become the next Howard Stern. I'm going to be a radio disc jockey. I liked radio and TV. I thought, that's cool. I'm going to go down that route. So I ended up signing up for the radio and TV broadcasting program. It's like a two or three year certificate, whatever it was. I'm in there for a month. And I do a co-op one day at a radio station and the disc jockey says to me, um, what are you doing this for? And I thought, you know, why? And he said, the only guys that make money in the radio station are the guys that own the station or the guys that sell the, the radio ads. So wow. the only money is either in ownership or it's in sales. So I thought, hmm, that's interesting. So I went back to the, um, the school. I changed my class to the, uh, the business marketing program. Ended up doing a, a summer school program to catch up with my, my credits. Yeah. And then I, I graduated, right? And I think for me, I was always entrepreneurial. I, I always had a, when I was young, I always, always had Kool-Aid stands. I did whatever it took to make money. I was always, you know, an aggressive entrepreneur at a young age. And then- I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, it was great, man. So then I, you know, I get, to, I get out of school and I spent a couple of years- um, my buddies owned a bar in the U S and I had a hot dog business, like a hot dog vending business. This was back in the early nineties. And back then, you know, here's a hot dog business. I'm, I'm an 18 or sorry, a 20, 21 year old. And this hot dog business in 1990s generating like between 80 and hundred thousand dollars a year in sales back then. So think about that 30 years ago. That's a lot of coin. It's a lot of hot dogs. Good money, right? So I did it for two or three years, had a hot dog business and I was making more money than my father made at General Motors. Wow. Um, and so, but then I realized at 23, I couldn't do it forever. I figured I had to find a career. And then I had a neighbor who was in the financial business and he brought me in and uh, we've never looked back. So I've had one job, really, I've had one job outside of the hot dog business. I've only had one job in my whole lifetime. And this has been, this has been my passion is what I do. And, uh, and we've been uh, extremely successful and fortunate with, uh, with our business. Yeah. Cause I followed your success for years and when did you start Capital Wealth and like take us through that journey? Yeah, so Capital Wealth started, we incorporated the business. So I went into, I was just an advisor, a financial planner in the beginning um, with, uh, with a major insurance company. And then about uh, 1998, I incorporated. So, you know, I was five or six years as, a, as an advisor working out of an office and then I incorporated. But what I realized was that, you know, I'm in the commodity business, right? I mean, a lot of businesses are a commodity. I mean, hotels are a commodity. 
restaurants are a commodity. Pizzerias are a commodity. A product so, or a service, yeah. Yeah, so is financial, financial advice, right? So, but what I realized was, is that I'd rather, if I'm going to build a practice and a business, I, I don't want to build a holiday in, I want to build the four seasons. Yeah. And I think it's a much easier business. I find that even in times of recession, people, you know, people that, that are used to going to the four seasons, they, they still tend to do quite well. So we built a business, which was mostly around creating a platform of, of services. And unlike selling stocks, bonds, mutual funds, those are all commodity-based things. Right. Yeah. We created incredible planning pl platforms and programs. And when a client comes in, we're not talking about the commodity. We're talking about, this is our platform. This is our program. I'll give you an example. Our core program is called our Wealth Empowerment Program. We have a program designed for 18 to 30 year olds called our launch program. We have a program designed for business clients with a program designed for people that have gone through divorce and separation. So in any turn in life, we created these programs that we talk about the program and we say, you know, if you want to be part of the program, great. This is how the program works. And obviously inside that program, we're going to get paid. We're going to get compensated either from the advice side or from a product placement side. So it's worked out really, really well for us. Wow. Now, you know, I'm, I always do my Alex to Janice at this point, because Alex and I talk together all the time, but I love when Alex says it. So here's young Sally, first year at Niagara College, sitting at residence, or maybe not, sitting at home in, their, in her parents' basement. She's listening to this, and yeah, you, you know, you two guys, you know, you guys have built a business. I'm 18 years old, like you just said. Like, what, what can I do? Like, this is what every student's going to ask for this call is, listen, I, I'm 17, 18, 19, some of them are 20 years old, starting their careers. David, like, what do you think they could do? Like, right off the bat? Well, I'll tell you, I think, I think the key thing is, is first of all, they're in the right business, right? They're in, they're in the right program. And, and have, I, what I really feel for is when kids go to post-secondary and they're taking a history degree or they're taking a political science degree, nothing wrong with those degrees, right? Yeah. They're great degrees. The problem is it's hard to generate and be entrepreneurial in those areas. And I always say to my, my, my I have a son who's 18 years old, who's going off to university. Now he's only going to university because he's going to play football. If he wasn't <laughs> going to play football, he was going to college. Like I was going to put him in college. I think that's the route to go personally, right? Well, he did. Um, Unless you're a doctor or a dentist or an yeah. accountant or an engineer, obviously right. those professions, you need to go to the, the university um, uh, path, right? But I think if you drive down Ontario Street in St. Catharines and you look left, right, left, right, you'll see uh, a car dealership, a hotel, a restaurant, a pharmacy, another restaurant. They're all businesses, right? Yeah. So the key thing is, is, you know, whatever area you go into, if you have a passion for restaurants, and go out and create an incredible value proposition for your restaurant clients, right? Yeah. If you're going to be in the financial services or even the accounting business, I mean, there's a lot of businesses that are, are dinosaurs. Now, you know what? I, 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 do, I do believe this, that in the 21st century, in the 20th century, robotic engineering outsourced the blue collar worker. In the 21st century, AI is going to outsource the white collar worker. Yeah. But the difference is this. If you can go out there and provide and ask really great questions and be um, be a great consultant, talk to people, ask them what their goals are, ask them what their ambition is, ask them what their what the what the long game looks like, ask them where there's gaps, right? So what we do is we just ask them a bunch of questions. So Neil, in a typical interview, I might go through 15 or 20 questions yeah. to identify your gaps, and then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, based on our conversation. Here's all your wins and here's some gaps. Yeah. Would it be okay if I sat down for a bit and thought about this mm. and put together a strategy around your gaps? Yeah. So then what happens is they come back in for a secondary meeting and I say, hey, by the way, Neil, through our, our 90 minute discovery, here's all the things you're doing amazing. Just keep doing that, yeah. right? But here's the five or six gaps. And it's a gap on, let's say, on your saving strategy. It's a gap on maybe your insurance portfolio. It's a gap on... Uh, your business, if something happens to you, let's say from an illness or a disability. So we right. go through the gaps. Then I ask them, of those gaps, would you be okay writing one through five, one through six of most importance? Mm. They do that. And then I say to them, do you want me to put together a solution for that, to fix that problem? People love when you fix their problem. So yeah. I don't care if you're 
uh, in the clothing business. I don't care if you're in the real estate business, but go out and find a way to do it differently. But don't become a commodity. Become a unique value proposition. And people will pay for that. So this weekend, I just walk into Caswell's, right? It's higher end men's clothes. I just walk in, I put my hands up and said, hey, here I am. And they got they carries in there. She's like, okay, Neil, go over here. here. Here's what we got. Lays it all out. And Andrea, my wife, she's running all over. I'm just standing there. And I'm like, this, this, this is okay for me because I'm a guy and, and I'm not good at this. But I will pay people to find that gap. It's all about time. Absolutely. It's all about time, right? And and so you go down Ontario Street, and that's really what I'm teaching the students. So in, in the marketing program, marketing is sales and sales is marketing. Yeah. It really is because the definition of sales is the transference of confidence. So I have this, you're going to love this right now because I have the students right now, full-term project, doing a full marketing plan for a local Niagara B2C, preferably B2C business, like a restaurant, right? And they're doing an environmental scan, a consumer behavior. They're doing a new product development. They're doing some pricing strategies, some marketing, some positioning, some digital media strategies. And the students are really good at this, but what they're doing is what you do for your clients is they're walking into a company saying, you know, I'm a young 19 year old Niagara college student who gets technology. They get data. They get the fact that everything's measured on these now. Right. So they bring a lot to the game. And I think most students right now want confidence. And I think too, Neil, if, if I don't care what business you're in, let's just pick a business, a, a dry cleaning business. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You're going to buy a dry cleaning business or you're going to buy that. I would say, you know, what do all the dry cleaners in my, my neighborhood do well? And what are the gaps? And what do people want? What do people find the biggest challenges with dry cleaning? I know for a fact it's, it's dropping it off. It's the picking up a bit, whatever the issue is, right? Yeah. If I can solve the problem, what I'm going to sell is, hey, listen, I'll be your dry cleaner, but here's the three or four things we do that our competitors don't do. Yeah, we'll now, text price you. Is going to be, price might be more. Listen, at the end of the day, I'll never forget this story. I went to Toronto with my, my spouse about six months ago for a birthday. Went to an expensive hotel. You know, really, it's an expensive hotel. Do I want to pay that, that money? Of course not, but I want to give her a great night out. <laughs> long story short i'm at the counter checking in with my credit card and, and the lady says to me um sir would you and your wife care for a cold beverage and i said yeah we'd love a sparkling water and the lady called over from behind the desk one of the associates and said mrs somerville sitting over in the chair section in the red jacket would you mind taking her this this bottle of sparkling water and i thought wow compared to saying here's two bottles of water so it was a little touch. And I sat there and I thought that alone was almost worth paying the price you pay for the expensive hotels. Mm -hmm. So you know what, if you want to make, I always say to myself is, I, I, if, you want to, if you want to drive a Rolls Royce, sell to those that ride on the subway, you know, have an offering out there. Yeah. And just make sure that people have to realize too, is that in your class, Neil, right now, there's only two economies for pay that, that we, can, we can go through. There's two economies, right? There's the, there's the time economy, mm -hmm. which is we get paid an hourly fee to do what we do. Right. Um, and we know that if we get $15 or $25 an hour, we're going to make $25,000 to $35,000 a year. Budget that. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the results economy. And the results economy, there is no floor. I could make nothing, but there's no ceiling. So, you know, as I say to my clients right now, and I have an 18 year old son and I said to him, like, you need to make, and it, it, I know it might sound crazy, but you know, you need a hundred thousand dollars of income as a person, as an individual, just to survive in this world today. Look at the price of homes, look at the price of cars, the price of going out. So you need to go home and change people's lives. And I remember hearing a great line and the guy said, if you want to make a million dollars, go change, go change a thousand lives. If you want to make a billion dollars, go change a million lives. So if you can go and impact people's lives, yeah. the more impact you can make, you know, a guy like, like you know, uh, Jeff Bezos or a guy like Elon Musk, they've changed billions and billions of lives yeah. and they're paid billions and billions of dollars. So go out there and really impact people's lives by finding out what people, where the gaps are in their life and filling the gap. And people are happy to pay to fill the gap. 
Well, here, here's a reality. And you and I bridged this before we kind of went in recording is I've got students right now who, who really real estate net worth is difficult and, and you deal with it every day. And, and I really wanted you on here to kind of shed a light on what they can do because there are things they can do. You can't just give up and, and, and just investing everything and jumping into Bitcoin and all that stuff. You know, there's some caution there, right? So, you know, let's go back to that 18 year old individual who's in the college right now and, and they want to set some dreams and goals. How would you set them on, on their way? Like, what would you say to them? So what I would say, first of all, is, and again, this is why we created a program designed specifically for 18 to 30 year olds, because what I kept hearing from our clients was, you know, Neil, I talked to a guy who's 50 or 60, who's 70, who's got tons of money, yeah. created wealth, done well for himself. And I asked him, so what are the things that keep you awake at night? And he says, you know, my life is good. My wife is good. My money is good. I've got a condo down South, but what I worry about the most are my kids. Mm. And the problem is the school system hasn't really taught our kids, uh, especially at a, at, a, at a high school level, even yeah. Like yeah. College, university. I have lots of clients that graduate with medical degrees that don't know how uh, a stock or a bond works. Yeah. So, or, or debt versus equity, right? So what, I, what we found was, is that everybody said to us, my biggest thing that keeps me awake at night is the fact that my kids are unprepared financially. So we got to get you prepared. Now, uh, what I do realize is when clients come in that are 18, 19, 20, 24, we start talking about like, what's the plan? So if you want to buy a house in five years, we've got to start thinking about how to create wealth over five years. Now, right. you know what? And, and listen, I get the Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency thing. I have an associate downstairs who's 23 years old. Every single time a client comes in of his age group, they all want to own crypto, Bitcoin, you know, you know, whatever whatever tokens, whatever's out there, right? And the thing is, is that I'm not saying that that's gonna be the next great thing or the next great bust. We'll know in five to 10 years. But right. what I do know is I've been through a couple corrections with people that speculate, you know, 20 years ago, it was gold. There were some gold stocks that went up to the moon and came back down again. Uh, Northern Telecom went to the moon, came back down again. People lost a fortune. Now, I'm not saying Bitcoin isn't the next great thing, but I'm saying if you look at it, the, the professional advisors, the professional wealth guys around the world that run all the big money, the maximum exposure they have to Bitcoin and crypto is, is between one and 2% in their portfolio. Right. What I'm finding is this generation has 100%. I'm not saying it's not going to go up. Ethereum, I mean, I get it, right? Dangerous. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, you know what? If you want to speculate, fine. Take some, take some money you have. Go speculate with three to $5,000. And take the other portion and buy, you know, a great basket full of stocks that hopefully will generate a 10 to 12% return or whatever, eight to 10% or whatever the number is, but you've got to get a plan. And I think, I think if you look at it right now, I have a belief, right? This is my theory is the first 25 years of your life from zero to 25, it's the learning years. It's all about learning, 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 right? Reading, networking, uh, podcasts, school, whatever it may be. From 25 to 50, it's your earning years. You've got 25 prime earning years because what's going to happen for those out there is when you hit 50, unlike Neil or myself, who are both in our 50s, <laughs> a lot of our people, they're getting tired of the rat race yeah. for, for ways to kind of exit. So the first 25 years, it's about learning. The next 25 years, it's about earning. Yeah. The next 25 years, it's about living, living a great life. And then hopefully the last 25 years, it's going to be, um, you know, legacy planning, or you're going to be able to uh, teach others or inspire or do some coaching or whatever it may be. But the point is for, for this generation right now is you've got to get really focused on the next, the first 25 years, learning, learning, learning. But when it comes to your money, you know, be careful because what you don't want to do is put your money away, have your, your portfolio go higher, go higher. All of a sudden, you know, six months prior to buying your first home or your condo, Crypto falls 50%. The banks don't look at uh, crypto in their, um, when yeah. they look at your um, your net worth statement, right. when it comes to the loan, they don't use that as collateral. So they actually want hard currency. So mm. I'm just saying is get a plan around it. And I'll tell you one thing, when I started out at 23 years old, if you put chocolate cake in the refrigerator, you're going to eat it. I, 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 when I buy chips, I eat them, right? Like I love chips, right? Yeah. So when, when there's a, when there's chocolate cake in the refrigerator, it, it calls my name. <laughs> when it comes to your money, when it comes to your money, 
put your money somewhere where you can't see it. So you can't look at it every day. You can't be on your computer every day. Put it somewhere, either put it into a portfolio, do something online with it, but don't look at it every day. Don't keep it in your bank account and then just keep dollar cost averaging into it. And it may take five to 10 years. I mean, this new generation, I think um, what's gonna have to happen in a lot of cases is mom and dad are gonna have to rethink their strategy with regards to home equity. I think in the 20th century, it was all about paying down your mortgage, paying off your mortgage. Right. But when you're getting, when you're, when the average home price now is seven or $800,000, you know, a 5% down payment is going to be $35,000. Yeah. So yeah. you better have the cash flow. You better have some liquidity. Make sure you have an emergency fund. A lot of these people go into their first home and they're not prepared for the fact that the roof leaks. They're century home. homes. That's what you can afford. They're a century home. Wiring, yeah. furnace, roof, foundation, sewer, water main, all that stuff. I, I, I take it back. So this week in college, I was talking to students. I was like, yeah, you know, guys, I'm going to bring in Dave Somerville. And right now you're wondering how the heck you're going to afford pizza money this week. And they're, they all giggle, right? And I'm like, I'll never forget. It was, it was probably around 2012. You came into our class and you said, if you guys were just to put $25 a week away, yeah. I'll never forget that. And, and you said that, and, and this is how you do it. If you, if you were to put that away, many of you could be independently wealthy by the time you're 45. And that, that punched people in the face because you brought it down to say just this week, instead of maybe that extra pizza with, you know, extra stuff on it, you get yourself, go get yourself some greens from Zares and an onion or something. Just, just take that extra money and just, just once a week, and become disciplined at it. I'll, I'll never well, forget that advice. You know, it's it's discipline, right? And it's funny. I'll give you a quick example about discipline. I read an article about Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, six-time Mr. Universe. Arnold is Arnold, right? And they interviewed him after he won his first Mr. Olympia. And they said to him, was it your goal to become Mr. Olympia? And he said, no, my goal was every day I went to the gym from 14 years and older. My goal that day was to lift as much weight as I could. I'm going to curl more weight in an hour and a half than anybody else will. And he wow. did it back to back to back to back to back, right? So it was discipline that built his, his physique, right? And I think the problem is, is that we get caught up in the fact that we all want what's easy. It's a get, it's a, you know what it is? It's an instant gratification world. We order a pizza, it's on our phone. We want to order off Amazon, it's there in a day. Everything in this generation, right? And it's difficult for me too, because I'm kind of getting caught up in that old, that new generation where I can order things and it'll be here in a day. Are we you allowed on Amazon unsupervised? <laughs> There. But it's true, right? Like the point is, is that we live in an instant gratification world. Yeah. And, you know, and you, if you think you're going to play a bunch of stocks and hit it to a billion, maybe you will, maybe you won't. I mean, casinos aren't built on the backs of winners, right? Yeah. Every now and then somebody wins. We know that there's a big winner going into the casino today and they're going to win a ton of money, but the casinos are built on the backs of losers. And I think what happens is, is that instant gratification, when it comes to your wealth, if you give it five, seven years, and I know it sounds like a long time, but think about that. Anybody right now who's, who's 20, 21 years old, you know, five or six years ago, you were, you were getting your driver's license. So from your driver's license to today, it's been six years. Yeah. In another six years, you'll be 27. So my question is, is where do you want to be in seven, six, seven years? Now, if you get a spouse who thinks the same way and you've doubled income, that savings program, all of a sudden now you've got that down payment to buy your first home. And I think what's going to happen is you may have to not go into what your parents live in, but it may be a, a thousand square foot condo. Get your home ownership, get some equity, um, you know, create your wealth pool, and then hopefully, you know what, later in life. And I, I do know that, you know, I tell my kid all the time is when he goes off to university to play football, I said, you've got, you've got six years to, to have your career in football and get as many years as you can out of, out of university. At 25 is when the, when the real world starts. Yeah. The thing we know today is this, is people aren't retiring at 55 and 60. If you love what you do, first of all, I never like to use the word retirement. I like to use the word transitionment, right? So when I'm 55, when I'm 65, I'm not going to retire. I'm going to transition yeah. into my next career path, right. which might be coaching, might be training, might be passing on my wisdom, um, so again, I'm going yeah. to really transition my life because what happens is when you tell the universe, you're done with the parts, the universe finds a way to take back the parts. Yeah. So don't tell the universe. I'm going to, so again, this generation has a longer runway and it's okay. 
I read a book, Neil, and it said that in today's generation, they're actually 10 years minus their age, right? Mm -hmm. So in a financial position. So when you're 25, you're that of a 15 year old. And I, I know it sounds really weird, but think about that, right? When our parents were 25, they had, they had two kids and they had their first home. Right. When I was 25, I was single with my first home. Right. When my boy gets 25, he'll have no money in the bank and finishing his degree. Like there's about a five to 10 year difference in, in lifestyle, right? Interesting. So yeah. It's okay that you're there because that's where you should be. You know, I've met in our practice, I've met in the last two months, I've met about 15 people come in that are between 20 and 25 around that age group. We had one person come in out of the 25 that had a net worth of over 250,000. Yeah. You know what he was? He was a, he was an electrician who started early. He got his license right out of school and, and he started working like a dog. And the guy lives a, drives an old beat up truck, lives a simple life, bought his first house. And guess what? He sold it last year, made a ton of dough. And now he's moving on to his next and next endeavor. He's 25. Right. But I've got, I've got doctors that won't graduate school until they're 30. Yeah. And so it's, it's all changing, but there is a path, but you've got to be disciplined. You've got to get help. You need a coach. It's hard to do it on your own. I mean, the best, the best you know, basketball player in the world, LeBron James or whatever, whoever that is, they have coaches. They have coaches. The best golfers yeah. have coaches. The best business people have coaches like you, Neil. Yeah. We all need coaching, right? Get some coaching. Some financial coaching. That's that's just awesome, uh, David. How like how do people find you? Like how how because I got students right now. And you guys have better be writing notes because I'm writing notes down here. You, you guys might realize this might be on an exam somewhere. I I, I want to see students calling you and saying hi. You know my name is and I'm living in my parents' basement and they don't know what to do. Right, they don't know who to talk to and you know and and oh, bless the bank the banks. That's awesome, right? But, but there are a number there. And I always, I, always tell, I always tell my students, you know, sometimes the banks, they're okay. The credit unions are better. But I always suggest go find someone who invests professionally, like you. How, how, how can people find you? Yeah, it's a great question. And I will say one thing about the banks, right? The banks do a, a pretty good job. I mean, it's, it's, a tough, it's a tough racket for them, right? I mean, they've got, you know, the average bank has five to 10,000 customers in a branch. They've got a couple yeah. advisors. It's hard to... I really feel for what they go through. Now, the reason why we built what we built in our practice, our launch program, it wasn't to get rich. What it was designed for was the long game. And yeah. we know that if we get the 23, 24 year in early in his career or her career, yeah. and we build that relationship and we build that coaching and mentoring, and we build a structure, a portfolio, a plan around their future. We know that at some point down the road, when the harvest comes, we're going to be there to collect the harvest. Yeah. Right. And so they can find us if they go to our website and our, we just, we just finished up our new website. It hasn't been launched yet, but our old one's still there. If they just type, go to capital dash wealth or capital wealth management, um, just go to capital wealth management. That's our homepage. And I will say one thing too, Neil on the homepage, on the homepage, there's a video. We've got two videos on the homepage. Look for the video with the, with the young woman on the front. It's our, it's our launch video. And it talks about the seven critical areas that this generation has to start thinking about. And we built a whole platform around that. So what we do in our coaching program is uh, young clients come in here. There isn't a lot of dough. Maybe they've got $2,000, $5,000, $500 a month, whatever it may be. We've got a really great advisor who's 23 who just graduated Brock. He's got a business degree. He's running our launch program so he can build that relationship. But what we'll do is we're going to identify your strengths, your, your wins. We're going to identify your gaps and we're going to build an action plan. And I'll give you a quick example. I had a guy come in last week and he wants to invest, wants to start saving money. The bottom line was he had tremendous amounts of debt. He had student debt, OSAP debt, credit card debt. And I said to him, you know, we're not going to start putting money away just yet. We've got to hammer down your debt. So debt, yeah. we don't even get paid for this, right? So we get paid when we manage manage the wealth. We get a small percentage of every dollar we manage. Right. So what happens is in the beginning in that relationship is we're, we're betting on a bigger future for, for your, your, your students. We're betting that they're going to have bigger futures. So we're they prepared are. to kind of co-share that responsibility and say, hey, we'll take some risk up front. We're going to give you a ton of time to get you on the right track. But we hope that at some point you're going to create abundance. And then, of course, some of your uh, students will get into business. We can help there. They don't need advice 
on other areas when it comes to partnerships, if they ever get into a franchise. So there's lots of financial tools that we can kind of help implement. But yeah, have them go to Capital Wealth Management. Uh, it's on the website. Uh, check it out. Reach out to me. And I'm more than happy to have them come in and we'll, uh, we'll give them a bit of a really great uh, initial discovery meeting, uh, which we don't charge for. And then hopefully we'll, we'll identify, is this a good fit for both the client and us? If it's a good fit, we can help and we'll, we'll, we'll take them forward. Absolutely. I'll go uh, with your permission. I'll go one step further. I'd show that video at the beginning of our next class. Absolutely. If you're okay. great We're on March break this week. So I don't know what they're doing. They're probably out getting arrested somewhere. I, I don't know. They're, probably, they're out there just doing their stuff. Right. Uh, I told them to do their homework, but who knows? <laughs> Dave, you're awesome, buddy. I think. Thanks, man. This is like, I'm, I was taking notes. Like I ran out after about a page. It's just nuts here. And, uh, you know, again, I want to thank you as a friend and a colleague and someone that I look up to. And, uh, you know, you, you've impacted some lives today. Well, I, I'm please, happy. Please like do not you. underestimate how many people you've helped. You know, Neil, I'm happy to help. And just remember out there too, that you know, in, I use a baseball analogy. You can go to the Hall of Fame by hitting singles and doubles. You don't always have to hit home runs. The guy that swings for the home run typically strikes out the most. And I think investing and creating wealth is about not striking out. It's about hitting singles and doubles. Every now and then you want to hit a home run. Like that's important. And the, and the second key point I think I need to kind of leave them with is, you know, your education truly starts the minute you finish college or university. So the minute you graduate is when the education really starts. Right now, yeah. it's a great. Time. I want to do it now. Like I want first year. This is it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you know what? They'll do great. I mean, just again, keep creating value. Um, you know, don't be a commodity. Don't be like everybody else. You know, be that purple cow. You know, in the field. Don't be the white cow. And um, again, you know, create uh, unique value for others. And then what'll happen is, is that people will will burst down your door looking to uh, to do business with you. David Somerville, Capital Wealth Management. I love you, dude. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks baby.